That's uh, uh, actually. Uh, oh, for Nigeria. Nigeria goes ahead in to Kenya. That's With a ticket to the 2018 chance secured, Nigeria's home based Eagles shift focus to the Wafu Cup in Ghana. Nigeria's deep tigers get federal government boost in Afro Basket title quest. My legacy, my boxing record, everything is on the line. Mayweather vows to deliver ahead of McGregor's showdown. Are these and other major stories will make up the show tonight? This is Sports Center. My name is Juliet Mapwa. Thanks for joining us. Also on the show. Martial Arts has a new world champion as Australia's Ungoyan records shock win. All right, there, it's a fast-paced world when it comes to sports, and we ensure you do not miss out on all the exciting stories as they get to break. And let's start with some of the biggest headlines and graphics. Get started now. One week after the IWAF World Championships, London 2017 uh, drew to a close. The IWAF Diamond League picked up just a couple of hours away from the British capital uh, with the Muller Grand Prix Birmingham on Sunday. As is often the case with post championship meetings, now recent medalists look to prove that their podium finishes in London uh, weren't by fluke, while athletes who missed out were seeking redemption. And one of such was Nigeria's blessing of Kagbari. Only she only managed a fourth place finish in the hundred meters. Okubari will now focus on the final leg in Belgium on September the first for the top prize. Uh, Britain's Mofara marked a significant milestone. The four-time Olympic gold medalist won the three thousand meters in the final track race on British soil. So you get to enjoy highlights of the IWAF Diamond League in Birmingham. Nigeria's women's 100-meter record holder, Blessing Okaribe, will continue her search for first title of the IAAF Diamond League season in Brussels after placing fourth in the women's 100 meters at Sandemula Grand Prix in Birmingham. <laughs> Newly crowned world champion Ramil Guliev of Turkey won men's 200 meters. Guliev cruised to victory in 20.17 seconds. There was success for the U.S. in the 110 hurdles as world record holder Ares Merritt won in 13.29 seconds. <laughs> Nigel Amos of Botswana put up a great performance to win the men's 800 meters. Mofara brought down the curtain on his track career in Britain by winning the men's 3,000 meters, his farewell race on home soil. A 34-year-old who is switching to road racing in 2018 came home in 7 minutes, 38.64 seconds. <laughs> Another newly crowned world champion celebrated his London triumph in style as Qatari's magnificent high jumper, Mutaz Essa Bashim, produced the performance of the meeting with the world's best jump of the year, 2.40 meters. 
A Floyd Mayweather Jr. and Conor McGregor are gearing up for one of the most anticipated and controversial fights of the year in Las Vegas on Saturday. Now, with a super fight against UFC mixed martial artist McGregor just days away, uh, Mayweather struck a reflective turn as he discussed uh, the risk of coming out of retirement for a massive payday. Now, he admits his legacy and records are on the line. Uh, Mayweather, who has not fought in nearly two years, needs a win to surpass Rocky Marciano's record and get to reach 50-0 for his career. Well, Mayweather may be far from his prime, but it feels the sheer experience in the ring will carry him through what he says will be his last fight. And the fight is expected to be the most lucrative event in the history of combat sports. We know Mr. Tapo like to quit. And you will wave that white flag because you can choose which way you want to go. You, I'm, and, I, and I'm guaranteeing you this. You going out on your face or you going out on your back? Now, which way you want to go? Which way you want to go? This is my first time in a boxing ring. And in six weeks, I run boxing. <laughs> This is just like it when both of them come up against each other. Well, can't wait then. Saturday, Las Vegas. Three match days left as the stakes get higher. The fight for the title, the race for continental tickets, and the battle for survival. So on match day 35 in the Nigerian Professional Football League, our leaders split United slipped up on the road. MFMFC closing the gap on the leaders to just uh, three points. And we seem to have a three-horse race for continental tickets with Aqua United, Ayimba, FC, Fayumba all in with a shout. Uh, but there are interesting starts in the league. Uh, the NPFL nears its 700 goal mark. 350 matches played so far and a total of 695 goals scored. And the battle for top scorer also gets edgy with MFM Stephen O'Day leading the pack with 18 goals. But closely followed by Lobby's Tony Okotsu with 17. Now, they may be leading the scoring charts, but his teammate, Sikiro Latubosu, has uh, provided more assists in the league, a total of 10. Nasarawa United's uh, Thomas Zenke has contributed to nine goals and Plato's Daniel Itodu eight. But some goalkeepers have ensured the NPFL goal scoring record isn't broken this season. Nasarawa United's Saraj Ayeloso has kept 14 clean shirts. Mustafa Ali to of Tornadoes 13 and Aqua United's Olori Leke Ojo keeping 13 as well. Well, the NPFL has no doubt seen a tremendous improvement since uh, the league management setup. It has witnessed a growth in 10 out of the stadium, a partnership with the La Liga and players' welfare. But the LMC reckons there are still works to be done uh, to take the domestic league to an enviable height. Well, LMC chairman and second vice president of the NFF, Sheo Diko, uh, says uh, that the body is working on getting more television and radio stations on board for broadcast of more NPFL matches and the board also plans to get the league in sync with the European calendar. This is a work in progress. I think before the season ends there will be some uh, announcements and some uh, and some uh, progress that will be reported to both the clubs and the general public because we are working very hard with our partners with everybody involved to make sure that by next season we have more and more, more and games games live on TV. Uh, that will uh, help the growth of the league. That will help to eliminate all the little issues we are seeing with the league. And that will job start to get the league to really be, be on the best um, marketable position. Kafa in the last symposium have agreed that, uh, uh, based on the statistics, about 72% um, of African leagues are, are doing August to May. So I think it's uh, in the interest of everybody we to have a unified calendar where everybody play at the same time, like they have in Europe, so that we can, we can rebuild the Champions League and the Cup Champions League and the uh, Cup Confederations Cup. And then we have a system where everything, everything is stable. From Africa and Europe, it's just basically about two hours, three hours minimum, max, so we should be able to have our calendar the same way. Because uh, even FIFA work with the European calendar. So I think we are working towards that. Even this season, that's why we start early. That's why we have uh, a lot of midweek matches because we wanted to finish early so we can start early to be able to meet up. I think after we finish this season, we will work to see that we start as early as possible so that we can be able to meet up this, uh, this new uh, proposal to be able to have the, our, our league align, align with the August-May May calendar. 
Coming up, first journalist Wilfred Mang will join the show as we analyze the headline stories during the Sports Press Review. It's the Nigerian Professional Football League. It's a great shot. Okay, did that get you on your feet dancing? Our two red cards, Wayne Rooney with his 200th Premier League goal. That summed up the Premier League game at the Etihad on Monday night football. A Manchester City and Everton playing out a 1-1 draw in a bad-tempered game. Ryan Sterling's late strike saving Pep Guardiola's blushes. Now you get to see the talking points. from Jagielka, who stops City taking the lead from their famed goal. The, uh, unrecognized. Guerrero. Oh, it's a beautiful pass for David Silva. And it thumps back into play. I'm just keeping my eye on him. Just see him in the corner of the box. He seems to be struggling a little bit. Great challenge from Jagielka. And the company... Giving it to Albert Lewin, it was Sane's mistake. Everton could be in here with Rooney. It's his 200th goal in the Premier League. And it's come away to Manchester City. He's the second name on an exclusive list after Alan Shearer. It is a landmark moment in a career it's also come at a very important yeah, moment in an important that's match that's and as Holgate and Calvert-Lewin deserve great credit they win the ball back and you think there's, there's a call for offside Stones is clearly playing him onside and lovely play We've got a great finish from Rooney it's fantastic great play once again from Calvert-Lewin sidesteps company through Edison's legs isn't it just typical Wayne Rooney former Manchester Four minutes past stoppage time to go to half time. In goes Baines. Booker. Uh, uh, late. Uh, his book, Phil, there's a, a little bit of continuity there. Yeah, it's good defending once again from between. Just see the late chance from to then break quickly themselves. If they can't then press, they're dropping back. They're for Pickford. And as you can see he's here, Ooh, he's very thankful was... for Baines. Very good defending from Leighton Baines. I'm sorry about my ooh. Danny, because there was an incident here with Kyle Walker, who has just been booked um, catching Calvert Lewin, and uh, Walker's got to go. I think there's going to be a second yellow card. It is gets worse for Manchester City on his home debut. Sterling. Booked early on, he's going to go. It's a second yellow, and it's ten against ten. And he believes Aguero set him up. Otamendi, Holgate, passed by Bernardo Silva.
David Silva wins it. Aguero. De Bruyne. There's still time for Manchester City. Danilo, it's deflected. Holgate gets to it. And it finishes as it did here last season. 1 1. Great respect between the two old mates from their Barcelona days. And Pep Guardiola. A sports journalist Wilfred Mongna joins me on the show. It's good to have you, Wilfred. Yeah, yeah, always a pleasure, Juliet. Okay, Wayne Rooney there with uh, two goals, nine, two games. Now, how much is that for, I suppose, its finished career? Uh, well, 200 Premier League goal, fantastic milestone for him. We know the target is to catch um, that's um, Alan Shearer mm. at the top. And, um, but for him, it just shows you that he wasn't finished at United and he got a goal that also got Everton a point at um, the Etihad. So in all, I think it was a good night for him and Everton. And red cards are Kyle Walker, Morgan Schneider, Lee spot on there. Well, um, the Kai Walker one a little bit harsh, but uh, you know, the first one you could say maybe yellow was a little bit harsh. But the second one, you knew you were on a yellow card and any slight incident you could get yourself sent up. Obviously, he knew Kat Lewin was coming on his right because mm. he had a slight look on him and still went, you know, with the intention of maybe barging into him. Um, maybe some referees would have looked away, but at the same time, I wouldn't fault the referee for sending him off. Okay, I know it's early days, it's just two games, uh, but uh, Manchester City with City does have a favourite for the title. After two games, how convincing are they? I think um, so far so good. Yeah, this Everton side, they are not pushovers. Now, they, they were one of the busiest in the current transfer market. It's, it's still on. And um, you expect that they will get to push for the top four. So if you get a point against Everton, I don't think it's a bad result. So for them, Man City, I think they are still on track maybe to go on and get what most people tip to them to get. All right, the biggest gist in the transfer market, Manchester City are supposedly ready to meet that 275 million uh, bath class for Lionel Messi. Lionel Messi. You know, it, it said they've met up with Messi's representatives. A few windows ago, we mm. would have just laughed about this report. <laughs> but we've seen Neymar leave, we've seen Barca looking like a team in decline. So mm. you never say never, right? Yeah, never say never. Uh, you, know, you know the Neymar buyout clause taught a lot of people a lesson, uh, especially Barcelona, because they lost their price asset because uh, they had that um, buyout clause in it. Now, the Messi contract also has it. Now, it's not just about meeting the buyout clause. I think for the fact that Neymar left, a lot of people are dissatisfied at Camp Nou, especially the big players, the Suarez's, the Messi's, and all the rest of them. There's this other um, school of thought also faulting Jose Maria Bartemio. That's um, the president okay. um, there at um, Barcelona. Well, is there any chance? Is there any chance I... Manchester City could really get him? Yeah, they have the money, but they might run foul of the financial fair play rule. Okay, then let's talk about the Nigerian Liga. Play to United, sleeping on the road. That's the 2 0 defeat at ABS mm. FC. Uh, so we have MFM FC breathing down their neck. Yeah, and uh, just three points behind, three more match days. Still play two to go, right? Yes, just like the name suggests, play two. I think they will stay at the top till the very end of Is it. Is that what it means, top? Oh, yeah, play two. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they will just remain there. MFM, I think they are good to get a continental spot, mm. and that will be it. Okay, well, uh, I, I, I talked about some NPFL stats, quite mm, interesting. Mm. Now we've got Steven O'Day as well as Antonio Porto uh, <sighs> in with a shout for the top goal, uh, scorer award. Mm, just, 18, just, 17. Just one more goal yeah. for Porto. Yeah, and um, funny enough, if you look at the momentum, then you could think uh, you would want to favor um, Porto. Three more matches to go. And O'Day hasn't been scoring so much in the second stanza yeah. of the league. Uh, maybe the trip to Denmark and all that is affecting him, but I will favor Oboto to go on and clinch it. Mm. Well, kudos must be given to those NPFL club sides that have managed without uh, the home exactly. base players. Well, they're back now, so the, that, that's kind of a boost for them. Mm. About the Chan Eagles, they've got that ticket to uh, the 2018 African Nations Championship. Sure. Yeah, also kudos to them for doing that mm -hmm. against Bennett. Uh, but now the focus is the Waffle Cup. Yeah, surely that begins next month. And that's in Ghana. And the good thing about the Waffle Cup is, especially now that Nigeria has qualified for the Chan tournament, this will serve as a preparatory ground uh, leading to the Chan proper, which is in January. So, you know, our fear in those qualifiers was that we're playing only the final round. These guys had played previous rounds and we're trying to assemble a team within sh such a short period. So I think the, wa uh, the Waffle Tournament is fantastic for Nigeria leading to Chan. Okay, the home being star Agus will be uh, coming back to camp again to prepare for the Waffle Tourney, uh, which will be kicking off September the 9th in Ghana. Mm. And for coach Salisu Yusuf, that's just his focus for now.
The future is bright. We continue to build the team to develop the team. We hope to use the wonderful competition to perfect the team so that we go to China with a better and strong team. Yeah, his plan is to make the team stronger, to bring in some players, stronger players. We have seen all this study and we will make change like uh, it will come now to make the Tikwa Futin 25. Yeah, I know I'm going to catch it because I believe myself in Bene. He was lucky enough. So this time around, I told him I'm going to catch it. And I think when he played it, I made the right decision. We thank God we made our beloved fans here, Kanu, Kanu State and Nigeria proud that we've qualified for Chan. Well, but before that Wafu Chane, there seems to be a bigger challenge for the main Super Eagles. Which uh, is? That's the 20... Oh, <laughs> against Cameroon. World Cup qualifier against Cameroon. Mm. Well, Code General already saying um, the team will be uh, getting that victory uh, over the Indomitable Lions for ailing goalkeeper Kali Keme. How much is that for uh, a boost? I think it's a good one. And uh, a lot of Nigerians already favoured the Eagles to get a victory in that one. And I'm sure Kali Keme would be watching. We know he was diagnosed with mm. leukemia not too long ago. But at the same time, you start wondering, why is the team list not mm. out, as in the list of invited players? Mm. It's barely two weeks to that particular game. By now, we should know who would be playing and invite Vince. Yeah, he's already Alba. mentioned that the likes of Victor Moses coming back, Captain uh, Mikel Obi also coming Rabi back. Rabi Ali also, yeah. he said he impressed him in the Chan game. So you, we know the usual suspects will be there, but we still want to see it. Okay, so we might uh, be getting to see that list uh, at the end of this week. Yeah, probably. hopefully before yeah. the end of the week. Okay, then. Well, let's talk about uh, the Tigers becoming uh, the first side that the Afro Baskets had to qualify mm. for the quarterfinals with mm. two games to spare. Now, uh, that was a, a comprehensive win there uh, over Egypt. We've seen the Tigers uh, do it in three games now. Uh, Sports Minister Solomon Delong already coming out full support, saying the federal government will do everything to make sure they get that title. But we know the last time they won it was 2005. So Way back. How convincing are they for it? Sir? Well, um, you mentioned 2005. I think the good thing from that 2005 squad is that three members from that squad are actually with the, the Tigress, and that's in Malim Fonudoka, the MVP from that tournament way back. And even Aisha Mohamed is still playing, even though Mfon is the general manager of the squad. But again, is um, they, they played their toughest game. Uh, that's against Mozambique. The other guy is Diaru Congo, and for me, Egypt, they were pushovers mm. for Nigeria. The, the toughest game they probably play in this competition will be against Senegal, of which they've already qualified, but it gets okay. tough at this stage. Senegal, Mozambique, uh, let's say um, Mali, those are the Angola, of course. Of those course are the teams that. Nigeria should be wary of. Okay, they've got a game there tomorrow. So yeah, tomorrow to against, against Guinea. Guinea. Yeah. yeah. All right, then. Thank you very much for your time, Wilfred oh, Mark. Always a pleasure, Juliet. So, yeah. So, next up for D-Tag versus Guinea on Tuesday, uh, the Nigerian girls have been dominant and uh, display arguably the most talented roster in the 12-team event. Now, through to the quarterfinal, just how optimistic are Nigerians of the title in Bamako? Well, well, I think they can go all the way. Yes, we've got a very, very good team at this point in time. The likes of Elin, uh, Elonu... Uh, um, what about uh, NK Chiyakashile? These are girls that I've seen them play. I, I saw their training and I feel that uh, with what they've been able to do over the couple of weeks, we know that Senegalese are the favorite, but I still feel Nigeria should go as far as the semi-final if we play up to our potentials. One team I'm so close to, the d Tigress, I, I believe they have what it takes to go as far as possible because the last time out in uh, 2015, I remember this team got as far as uh, the semi-finals, losing to host nation Cameroon by a point in the semi-finals and they finished third in that last uh, championship. They will indeed uh, be hoping this time around to go a step further. Well, judging from their uh, preparations, uh, one would uh, tilt towards the fact that uh, they may not go too far. Okay, but uh, having said that, they have a, an experienced coach and an experienced side that have they came third in the last edition in Cameroon. Getting to the semi-final, anything can happen and they might as well go as far as winning the championship, but I'm not backing on them winning the championship. Again, seven match, Dimitrov. Grigor Dimitrov breaks into tennis top ten with biggest win of his career.
uh, you are a lover of martial arts, then you sure will love this. A title changed hands with that big win, uh, a big upset rather, in one championship main event. Uh, there is a new featherweight champion, thanks to a perfect counter by Australia's Martin Ogunye. A Russian Marat Garuba is no longer undefeated. Now, Ogunye saw himself in a rough spot early on, uh, but that low kick by Garfurov paved the way for a massive overhand uh, that had the now ex-champion London face down on the mats in round two. In fact, it wasn't even in the cage to hear the announcement of Ugoya's win at Stadium Nagara in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Okay, enough said. Now you get to watch Martin, the Sito Asian, Ungoye, dethrone the undefeated fighter in this spectacular fight. The largest sport media property in Asian history won championship electrified the iconic Negara Stadium in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia with another authentic world-class martial arts action. A series of compelling bouts were performed by the absolute best in local and international martial arts talent. In the main event, Martin Nguyen shocked his previously unbeaten Russian opponent Marat Gafurov in their rematch to become the new featherweight world champion. Gafurov dominated the first round with his magnificent grappling, but Nguyen found his groove in the second frame as he tore apart his Russian foe with his striking. Sex uh, only boxing has uh, some showmanship in it. Well, Grigor Dimitrov finally breaks back into the top 10 of the ATP rankings. Uh, that's on the back of capturing the biggest title of his career. Uh, with three of the big four players nursing injuries and Rafael down knocked out in the quarterfinals by Krayos. Uh, Dimitrov grabs this chance with both hands, winning his first Masters 1000 series event, beating Krayos at the Cincinnati Open final. But for Sino Simona Halep, uh, she couldn't take the chance to become the women's world number one, falling in the final to Wimbledon champion Gavin Muguruza. Now you get to watch the scintillating finals as we count down the U.S. Open. Nick Kyrgios, Gordamitra. Bulgarian Grigor Dimitrov won his first Masters 1000 title after beating Australia's Nick Krios in straight sets in the Cincinnati Open final. World number 11 Dimitrov broke once in each set to beat 23rd ranked Krios 6-4-7-5. Krios also chasing his first title, hit 31 unforced errors as he was outplayed by the Class C 26-year-old. Okay there, so that does it on the show for tonight. Hope you had a great time with us. My name is Juliette Mafwa. Do have a good night. <laughs>